Hey, what's going on YouTube? This is your homie Big Daddy Gibbs from BDG Comics and you're watching my top 10 comic books of February 2022. Now to start things off, I got some Now to start things off, I got some honorable mentions. Now these I got four books here and they're in no particular order. We got Amazing Spider-Man number 88. Radiant Black number 12. Maestro World War M number one and Ghost Rider number one. Now, coming in at number 10, it's a book I was very, very hyped for, uh, very excited for, and then once I got it. Uh, I had like an anxiety about reading it because I wanted it to live up to my expectations because I love the character so much, but uh, it was good for sure. Obviously, it made it into my top 10 of the entire month, but it wasn't like amazing. So I would say these books really start getting uh, to that like amazing echelon, that S tier, that even A tier. Once I get around like six, then they start getting really good. So at number 10, I got... Carnage Forever, number one. Like I said, this was a good book. Um, had a really good setup story, and uh, it, it almost seemed like they could have just made it uh, the Carnage Red, White, and Blood number five at first. They kind of made it like a little anthology. There's two little mini stories in it. It made us, it made me at least excited for uh, the ongoing series with Rom V. All right, next up at number nine, we got. Batman the Knight, number two. Now, I rather enjoyed this issue, maybe even more so than I enjoyed issue number one. I really liked what, the, what they did with Bruce Wayne. Interested in the character that he is going, or he went to Paris for to train with, uh, the Grey Shadow. Uh, she seems really cool, and I'm excited for issue three. All right, coming in at number eight is actually a comic that I got super late. I didn't read this comic until last night and I had to like emergency place it into my top 10 because it definitely deserved to be there. So coming in at number eight, I got AWA Upshot's Crimson Cage number three. Such a really cool book. There was a pretty brutal scene in here that kind of uh, capped off the issue and just made it uh, made it special. Definitely a really good issue. Curious to see where it goes in the future. Um, Chuck Frenzy is a really cool character and uh, seems like he's losing his mind a little bit. I've never actually read Macbeth. Um, after I finish this series, I'm probably going to do that just to see uh, where the similarities lie. Definitely dig in this run so far. All right, next up at number seven, we got Hulk 4. I know a lot of people are very down on this run so far from Donny Cates, but um, I think that the run has been really special. It's just this crazy, fantastical sci-fi story, more more than what I expect from a Hulk story. I guess I what I expected is it would just be big, dumb, brute Hulk smash, and it's not. So I'm pleased with that, and I'm excited to see what uh, Donny Cates has in the future planned for this, this series. Um, I know at some point we're supposed to have a the Thor and Hulk are supposed to cross over and we're going to get that banner of war is what they're calling it, I think. All right, and number six, I got Sabretooth number one. It's a really interesting intro to this run, uh, this series. Does Sabretooth ever actually break out of Krakoa? Or the Krakoan hell, I should say? Or is he just going to be trapped there forever? What I expect is that it will seem like he's escaped but he's still, at the end, gonna still be there and be, you know, escaped, but in his own mind. That's what I imagine is just gonna happen. They're almost gonna try to make the reader forget that he's there, and then at the end, he's just gonna be there. That's just what I assume will happen. I'm excited for issue number two. I think it comes out this coming up, new comic book day, March 9th. Yeah, let's see where it goes. All right, my number five is Dark Knights of Steel, number four. This is the Josh Middleton cover for number four. Uh, I really liked this issue. Um, it was, I think, probably the weakest issue. 
of Dark Knights of Steel so far, which uh, is pretty amazing that it made it to the top five of my books of February, even though I think it's the weakest of the series that just um, should tell you how much I think about the series so far as a whole. Yasmin Putri wasn't on the art for this uh, particular issue, and I think the book suffered from it, even though the art was good. They kind of made this issue more of like an expositionary sort of issue, more about filling up characters' backstories, developing their relationships to kind of set the reader up to where we are now. So it was a really good issue, but uh, still probably the weakest of the run so far. I think they did it right, though, by putting this as the fourth issue, because if they had put this as the first issue, it might not have gained as much steam as it could have. I commend Tom Taylor on that one for writing this in as the fourth issue and not as an introduction into the world. And at number four, we got Thor number 22. Uh, in my channel, I have a much lengthier review, very spoiler heavy review um, of Thor 22. We actually went through the entire thing and just talked about, you know, the plot and what happened. For the week, uh, I think it was like the February 23rd new comic book day um, week is when Thor 22 came out. Uh, it was actually my number one pick of that week. So uh, with it being down here at number four, it should you know tell you how much I think about the other three books. All right, and we have a new book from last week at number three. This is Action 1040. Superman Action Comics, number 1040. Uh, it was a really good issue. The art has just been fantastic in this series, at least at, at least recently. The uh, setup and plot in uh, at least this War World mini arc has been absolutely fantastic. Mongol is a really cool character, and uh, I can't wait for the next issue because I have a feeling, I think it's the conclusion, and I have a feeling that there's going to be a pretty epic battle between uh, Superman and Mongol. Let's see. I want to see where this rebellion goes. Now, the only thing I don't like about this book is that it has a $5 cover price because there is a secondary story in the back. I don't really like that secondary story. I think it deserves its own comic. I probably wouldn't personally pick up that comic. I have no investment into that character, and it's not my kind of story. It's very like aloof and kind of silly. It doesn't fit well with action comics. I think the book would benefit much better from 9 or 10 more pages of background for the actual main story, I would be happy to pay $5 a month for this book if it had that. I mean, I'm still happy to pay $5 a month for this book, to be honest, because the main story is so good. But if it just had that little, if those few more pages of development, and instead they have this silly Martian Manhunter story that doesn't fit at all into like an action book, it, it's a comedy kind of like silly slice of life kind of story i just don't know where it belongs but uh, it's not in action comics all right and at number two it's funny i there's something very very similar about number one and number two and i think as soon as you see num my number two you'll probably know or be able to guess what my number one is but uh, my number two is the 80 page giant from geiger so i really 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 like geiger oh i i got the uh the cover with um, Barney on it. I was looking for the cover with red coat on it. Uh, my comic book shock was all sold out of that one, but this was actually my second pick, more so than the main cover. So I picked this up. They promised basically to give us like little chapters of each new character, or not necessarily new character, but um, a character that hasn't really been fleshed out and fully revealed to the readers. It definitely delivered. It's 80 pages of awesome character development for this Geiger universe. Yeah, Image Comics is doing some pretty awesome things with their universes right now. Speaking of which, my number one is Supermassive, the one shot. Supermassive number one. Uh, <laughs> I don't know really what I can say about this book that hasn't been said already, at least by me. Um, I think this book is comic book perfection. The art is incredible. The story is really cool. The characters are very interesting. It's just an awesome crossover comic book event. I'm excited for more from this universe from pretty much every character. I really like every single character in this universe so far. Uh, both Radiant Black characters are really cool and have their different elements to them that make them interesting characters. And then you have Radiant Red, who has a, a little mini-series coming out. 
very soon. She's interesting, and I kind of want to know more about uh, her backstory with her husband. And I guess she has a whole bunch of money still, so what's she going to do with that money? Now, she, they didn't talk about Radiant Red in this issue, which uh, is kind of unfortunate. I wish they had um, at least had a cameo with some of the other Radiant characters. Uh, red, yellow, and pink. And then Rogue Sun, I'm very excited for. So Rogue Sun will definitely be this weekend sometime. It's probably when I'll read Rogue Sun 1. But I've heard really good things, and I'm definitely excited for the future of the Radiant Verse. Uh, I'm hoping we get some more Inferno Girl Red, too. She was really cool. I liked her, like, alien kind of concept. She thought Waffle House was made entirely out of waffles. She just had, like, some little alien quirks about her. And I thought that was really cool. All right, so uh, what books did you guys like from February 2022? Let me know in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe. And until next time. What the f is going on?